So based on the current leaks, the raid coming in into Destiny 2 for the reprise raid appears to be Crota's End. Now obviously Crota's End is a very easy raid, some would consider it a strike or a dungeon. I expect that Bungie is going to change it somewhat and make it a little bit more difficult, but in this video I'm going to go over the basics of Crota's End from Destiny 1 so you are prepared to understand going into the raid what it will look like. First off in Destiny 1 you go to an area in the Hellmount and you basically go and stay on a plate and kill some ads to allow a bridge to show up. This bridge is basically the entrance for the raid encounter. Now, I will say something about the original Crota. Because of the shortness and some of the cheeses in it, which obviously will fix, it is possible to solo it. I've done it myself in Destiny 1, but I expect them to make it a little bit more difficult. Once the bridge is fall formed, you will go and fall down a hole. Now, as you fall down the hole, you might want to brace yourself as you get towards the bottom. In Destiny 1, typically, if you fell on the bottom, you would hit yourself at the bottom, but you wouldn't die. I have done it a few times. Now, some of the changes they've made to Destiny 2, it should be a little easier because I believe you can't die from fall damage, just falling straight down. Once down there, you're going to notice that you're in an area, if you step out of it, that you will get a weight of darkness. This is similar to the buff that you see in the Light Blade Strike. That's when Destiny 2 expansion if you get this eventually what will happen is you'll get this up to 10 and you'll become very slow to move because of this you'll be susceptible to some extent to dying to enemies so you'll want to try to obviously stay away from that to relieve this buff you'll notice that there are a series of lamps that you can go next to those will take that buff off of you if you stay there long enough you'll go from 10 all the way down to zero and you'll be able to move at normal c and be able to jump again the trick here is, is that there's a series of lamps you're going to have to walk past, but as soon as one person stands in the lamp, again, similar to Light Blade, they will start a timer where the lamp will continue to glow and glow and glow until it explodes. If you're next to it when it explodes, it will kill you. Once it explodes, it will no longer relieve that buff from you. So really the trick here is to continue to advance past all of the lamps, taking the debuff off, killing adds, including some Cursed Thrall, and just doing that continuously to get through this part of the encounter. Since starting the lamp will eventually cause it to explode, what you do want to do is try to do it in a group. So basically have one person be the lead person, have that person go to the lamp, coordinate everyone getting there, then determine, hey, this is the lamp, the next one's in this direction, and let's go ahead and go and keep moving. A couple things to keep in mind is obviously there's lots of enemies, there's also Cursed Thrall, and there are, there are actually holes in the floor in certain areas that if you don't have your gamma turned on are hard to see. So keep that in mind, that is one way to die. Some recommendations for this encounter is obviously you can go invisible if you're a hunter. You can do self-res on your warlock. And obviously if you're on a, on a titan, having a bubble will be helpful when you stop at the lamps. From a weapons perspective, using things that kill things quickly, like a shotgun or machine guns or things like that to take out a lot of ads. And using a lot of your supers. Because your supers, if you continuously use them, you'll get orbs. You'll be able to get them back as a group quickly. As you'll advance, you'll notice there will be two knights at different areas. In Destiny 1, it was after the 8th and after the 13th lamps. There are knights you have to kill. For those, even if you're tempted to continue to run, they will chase you down. So I'd go ahead and deal with that. Most of the other ads, you actually can keep going. Because no matter what you do, they will continue to respawn. So you can't just stay at the lamps forever. Once you get to the end, you'll notice that there's another plate to stand on. Stand on this plate and it will generate a bridge. This is a repeat mechanic you're gonna see throughout the raid. While you're doing that, a bunch of ads will show up, including ogres that you'll need to take out. Those can be beefy, so again, having something that quickly takes out bigger enemies is good. Once you're finished with this, you'll see a message that shows the path forward is clear and the bridge is complete. At that point, just keep running forward. As long as one person within the party gets across through the light to get through to the next area, you'll complete this encounter. In this next encounter, you're going to have to work your way across a bridge with learning some new mechanics that'll come up useful later in the raid. First off, you're gonna see three totems that you have to hold. I would split up into three groups of two and have those people hold those totems. Once you start the mechanic where you hold the totems that regenerates the bridge, you're going to need to have at least one person stay on those totems. If someone stands off, you'll notice the screen starting to turn red and eventually it'll wipe the fire team. Again, if you've done other activities in Destiny 2, you've probably seen that, you've probably seen this mechanic in the past. After you kill a number of adds, a sword bearer will show up in the back and start moving its way forward. It's very useful for people to caught where the sword bearer is. Because at that point, have people go kill the sword bearer, and then one of the people on the plates will need to take that sword and take it across to the other side. Now you'll obviously need to make sure 
that the bridge has already been completed, which if you've been on the plates long enough will happen. Go across the bridge and you'll see enemies on the other side. Look for some additional knights that will say gatekeepers. Kill one of those and then stay on the side that you're at. Once you've done this the first time, another sword bearer is going to show up on the other side. Someone else is going to have to get off a plate. Again, make sure you at least have one person on each plate. Go ahead, do the same thing. Have a person kill the sword keeper. And again, do the same thing. Go across, find a gatekeeper, and wait on the other side. You'll notice there's a pattern here. One thing that will be difficult on the side where the sword bearers show up, you will notice, obviously, it'll be more difficult to keep the plates and also deal with the ads. So again, it's fine to use supers and things like that. You don't have a boss in this encounter. And use weapons that allow you to kind of control a plate by yourself with limited helps from other people in the fire team. The other thing to keep in mind is while you'll be killing uh, ads on the other side of the bridge, you can use a sniper or things like that to help people that are back at the beginning area. Once you get three people across at that point, you'll have enough people on the other side of the bridge to be able to hold the bridge open. So what you'll want to do is have the three people, three separate people, one person per plate stand on each of the plates that are on the opposite side of the bridge. Do that and the bridge will stay remaining and the people who are at the beginning area can get off and just deal with ads by themselves. So again, you'll have another person take a sword bearer down. You'll have that person bring the sword across and kill a gatekeeper. Continue doing that until you have all six people across. Once everyone's across, what you're going to notice is that it's sword playing time. A bunch of swords will show up and a bunch of knights will show up. Just go to town at that point. Use the swords, kill the knights, and that's the encounter. The next kind of mini encounter is going to be this thing called the Thrallway. So basically, you run through and you're just trying to get to the end of the hallway. A couple things that are going to happen as you're going through is everyone needs to keep up. And there's going to be some shriekers that show up. So having Galahorn or things like that are really helpful. One of the reasons it's kind of cool to do this is if you go up towards the front and get it fairly quickly, you can keep going all the way through the end, and there's a door and a chest that you can get, but only if you do it quickly enough. Next up, you're going to come over Irriut and Death Singer. So for this particular encounter, you're going to come into the main area where you'll be fighting Crote a little bit later on. When you come in, you'll want to split up into two groups of three. One, two peop three people on the right, three people on the left. There's a couple different ways weapon-wise you can do this, but if you have a sword, it's probably the most quick and effective way to deal with the knights as you're going through the room. So you're going to go right and left. There'll be knights that are right near the door. You want to kill those, kill the ads that are in the room. Then you're going to climb the stairs. As you climb the stairs, you're going to notice on both the right and left, there are rooms that you can go in, not the ones that are on the far end, not the ones that are kind of towards the end of the encounter, but basically as you come up the stairs. As you come up the stairs, you need to go in those rooms and kill the enemies that are in there. There are going to be a couple knights. There's going to be a wizard. And then after that, there'll be shriekers on both sides, which will be difficult to deal with. Take those out. Once you take those out, then what's going to happen is the shield around the death singer will come up open. At that point, go in and just wail on her. The big key with this is you do have a time-limited period of time to do this. So you have a time limit from when you enter the room. And also, if you take too long... She will start a short, I think it's a 30 second countdown. If you don't kill her, by the time the countdown is complete, you'll wipe the fire team. So when you get to Crota, it's going to be some similar mechanics. You're going to be in a center room where you have the opportunity again to have a shield on both sides. You'll notice that there's an area in the center where you'll basically start the encounter. If everyone stands on that, what you'll see is Crota will start building himself back and will appear and those shields will come down. Again, as most encounters, you're gonna have three people go right and three people go left. There's a bunch of ads to clear out in this area. For most people, you have a couple roles. You have a sword bearer, who's gonna be the person who tries to take out Crota, and then everyone else is on ad clear. For everyone who's on ad clear, have a rocket launcher, a Galahorn or something like that on hand and for the person's a sword bearer, it doesn't really matter. Swords actually would be good. You don't need it, but you don't need Galahorn necessarily because, again, your focus is going to be taking Grota down. After you kill the adds, you're, you're basically at that point, you can split up however you want, but some people should go to the bottom and help clear the adds in the middle. Chalice of Light is the only way to regain health within the room. You'll want to pass that around in a group. So if someone's hurt, Go ahead and pass it to them. If someone else is hurt, pass it back to them. You can basically take it off of people by using a key 
on your controller. Not too long after that, as you continue to kill adds, you'll see a sword bearer show up, and that sword is how you do damage to Crota. Obviously, there's a ton of ways to do this encounter. Um, some of the ways that some people do it is they'll actually put a bubble out towards somewhere in the middle and try to lure Crota towards it and use swords or things like that. I've seen that done. Um, again, you can place the bubble, again, to protect you when Crota's out there whenever you want to. But one thing you specifically want to do is put a Weapons of Light bubble on this area that is basically a couple rocks that lead up to Crota. This will allow A, the Sword Bearer, who at that point will also take the Chalice of Light to protect himself, that will allow them to go up and be protected while everyone takes out Crota. Again, the easiest way you can do it with snipers and other things, the easiest way is just throw a bunch of rockets, especially if Galahorn has Wolfpack rounds, that will knock the shield off Crota. Then the Sword Bearer will come up, do damage. If you have Super when you have the sword, do that as well. Do damage one time, then go back into the bubbles that you have that are on the stairs, have them take the shield down and hit them again. You can do that twice before that piece of the encounter and the sword goes away. One other thing to keep in mind is if anyone dies, an Oversoul will show up in the back of the room. That's one reason you probably will want to have a sniper as well. If an Oversoul shows up for any reason, have everyone on the fire team concentrate on it because if you don't, it will wipe the fire team. Once you've completed these mechanics a number of times and you basically have taken his health down to zero, that's it, the raid is over. Again, a fairly simple raid. I expect with Destiny 2, that you will see a number of mechanics added. You may have champions added. They may tweak the encounters a little bit. So originally Destiny 1 version of Crota, you could solve it very easily because there was a way to cheese going around the bridge. But they changed some of that by requiring you to essentially take everything over, all the swords over, right? Not just doing it once. And then eventually get to the point where you could take all the knights down. So I expect them to tweak and look at what could be done to make it a longer encounter and add some additional challenges to it but again we'll see once they add the raid to the game that's the video if you like it feel free to like the video subscribe my channel at my discord and i'll see you guardians in the tower